Hi, this is Kate Longacre with uh, Champions Choice for Early Learning and thanks for tuning in and um, I'm hoping that I can give you a orientation here to answer um, your questions that you might have um, within about a 15 minute period of time so I might talk fast. Um, I have my cheat sheets here so hopefully I won't miss anything and um, most of everything that I'm going to cover is in our handbook. Uh, we have a copy of it online as well, and um, but sometimes it, it's easier to hear somebody talk about it than read it, and then there's like the little gaps of information that you can't just type all that stuff out. So hopefully we'll um, get in there. Um, first of all, I want you to know how important you are as your child's first educator an ongoing educator and that we're here to support you not to take over that job. Um, we want to come alongside you and partner with you and help you in the process of um, giving your child the you know next steps he needs in um, his education and his overall development. So um, it's an important, this time in his life is a really important milestone um, the studies do show that children's brains develop at this time uh, pretty rapidly and there's um, a segment of the um, cognitive areas of the brain that are real open to information at this time and after about the age six some of those um, areas will close and those opportunities for um, development in those areas they say kind of shuts down, so they don't really pick them up later, so it's a real important time, um, and so um, I'm just glad that you have chosen to um, enroll your child and um, give him that head start, as they say, in his development. So, um, as I said, my name is Kate Longacre, and I am the founder and director at Champions Choice. I have a degree in early childhood education, which I received in May of 2012. Also have an Associate of Arts degree in, um, with an emphasis in journalism and English. And so, um, and I've worked with kids my whole life, and I really enjoy working with kids, and especially the little ones. They give me a lot of joy, and um, they're just fun. And uh, I, I just have natural um, ability to be patient and let them explore and um, learn things on their own, which is part of their development. Um, and preschool isn't, it is, but it isn't all about getting your child ready for kindergarten. Um, uh, that does play into it, but that is not the most important thing, because if we just do that, then we're going to be drilling kids, and um, that's not any fun. So. What we do is we provide a rich environment that they can learn and explore and in the process of that environment we use play as a method to teach them um, colors and numbers, we count their uh, toys that they're playing with, that kind of thing. And then we do add the um, element of the sit down lessons um, and a routine so that they understand what being a student is all about so that when they do go to kindergarten they know what being a student is all about as well. We do a lot of sharing and learning to share and um, from that aspect um, the religious side of the program is more about um, teach, treat, treating others the way you want to be treated and um, just I mean, that's just a real basic um, moral uh, character development and value. And so we do a lot of talking about that. Um, we do prayers at our meals, and they're just pretty basic, pretty simple. And we do share the gospel of Christ with the kids on a daily, well, not necessarily a daily basis there, but we do talk about, um, about God pretty much every day. So... Um, and our, um, all of our help are, um, have criminal background checks and have our CPR and first aid um, graduates, I guess you could call it. And our volunteers also, if we have anyone in here that's on a regular basis as a volunteer, 
they do go through a background background check and anyone that's here that does not have that background check does not have any unsupervised access to children so um, and we do have um, some volunteer things that you can do to help um, offset um, not reduce your tuition because on our sliding scale fee it's already pretty well reduced but um, volunteering and adding to our scholarship fund helps us to um, supplement that low tuition so that we can you know, pay the overhead expenses. And speaking of tuition, the tuition payments are due the first of the month, the uh, base fee, and then your hourly wage. Um, as I said, we have the sliding scale fee, and um, the fee schedule is on the website. So you pay a base fee of $25, and then you look on that sliding scale fee and you figure the total income, household income, from all income sources, um, child support, um, if you get TANF monies, if you get Social Security income, your wages, of course, all of those figure in, and then you kind of look and see what amount you make per month, and then you go, there's an hourly rate um, that you would pay then on top of that. And then um, you just, you bring an envelope, um, put your money in that envelope, uh, you do have to mark on there how much you're paying per hour. That's how we kind of keep track of whether you're up to date or not. And there's a folder by the door that you put that in. And we will not ask you to verify your income. Um, we don't want to get into all that. It's the honor system, so we just trust that you are being honest about what your income is. And sometimes incomes fluctuate, so it might be really good, you know, um, one or two months and then lower another month so that's up to you whether you average it for the whole year or whether you you know change it as um, your wages change and let's see um, I talked a little bit about curriculum we use a number of different curriculums to um, come together and make a whole program um, we do some themes especially around the holidays um, we um, I haven't found a complete curriculum that I really like that has just uh, the right mix of um, class time and play time and activities. Um, so I kind of just put a few different things together and work it that way. There is a sign in and sign out sheet by the door. That's how we keep track of um, you know who's here. Especially if we have an emergency, we can grab that, run outside, and we know all the kids are here and make sure that they're all accounted for. So um, you'll want to check that out. It's also how we keep track of um, uh, your hours and, and how much you've paid or what hours have been covered. And let's see. Um, yes, we do ask that you bring lunch. And we ask that you bring a healthy um, a healthy lunch. We try to avoid the cookies and things because the kids aren't quite understanding. I mean, we're teaching them to share, so they want to share their food as well. When one child comes with cookies and nobody else has it, it kind of creates a problem. He doesn't really want to give it up, and I'm not going to make him give it up. Um, but, you know, so we try to um, avoid the sweets. And occasionally, you'll be asked to bring snacks. Um, we'll have a snack schedule made out for that, and those snacks should be healthy. Um, no processed sugars or well, we try to avoid processed foods but um, things that are low in sugar and no high fructose corn syrup That's that really kind of gets kids hyped up um, birthdays we don't do a real big a birthday party thing if you want your child to you know his friends to enjoy his birthday with him cookies or a cupcake or something like that but we don't get into gifts and all of that kind of stuff, just a recognition that this is birthday. Uh, we do discourage them from bringing toys from home, unless it's like their favorite cuddly and they can't get along without it. Um, but we try to put those in their little cubby space, because if it's here, then they'd be expected to share it, and they somebody else might break it. So uh, we try to discourage that. Sometimes we have a child who just cannot come to school without bringing some toys. 
And so we might go through a little season of that child having those toys here. And um, after a bit, usually that that ends, you know. So, um, but we tried to discourage that. Let's see, and, um, and no weapons. <laughs> no toy weapons. Um, and we discourage those kinds of fighting games and um, that kind of thing, too. It's not always easy to do, but we try to talk about, you know, doing good things rather than um, hurting and harming others. Um, sometimes when we're making stories up, um, it's hard to dissuade the children from having the somebody die in the story, you know. And... Um, and so occasionally we kind of have to go with it. I don't want to destroy their creativity by saying no, no, no. But at the same time, I try to say, well, what if, you know, what if he doesn't die? What else could he do? So if you see uh, a, the character die, um, you know, it's, it's uh, something we couldn't dissuade him from. Uh, we do have field trips from, from a, on occasion, but we do not transport children. So when we do have field trips, um, the parents usually get together and do some ride sharing and that kind of thing. And parents are always welcome to come on field trips. In fact, you're always welcome to come and sit in and observe or assist. Um, if your child is having a, a hard day and you feel like you want to kind of hang out, that's fine. Um, yeah, so just any time, that's okay. Illnesses. We want to, it's in the handbook and on the website if you have any questions. Um, kind of the rule of thumb is if they have a fever, they need to stay home at least 24 hours after the fever breaks. Um, if they're vomiting or coughing a lot, you know, um, and um, if they have a sore throat that's lasted, you know, for a day or whatever, then um, they need to stay home. And most of my communications are through the internet, um, um, emails, and um, typically emails, and I do post things on Facebook from time to time, pictures and this kind of thing to kind of keep you up, up to date. I do have a private Facebook page just for families that are enrolled um, where I put more pictures on. I really don't like putting a lot of pictures on Facebook, and I try to avoid um, pictures that would actually identify your child, so I try to do, you know, distant shots or they're looking down or whatever. Sometimes you can't avoid that when you're, you know, putting up something. But anyway, um, yeah, so let's see if I covered everything. Yeah, okay, um, yeah, one thing. When you come drop off and pick up, that's, um, let's see, drop off and pick up and times of days. Okay, so we're talking about ages three to five typically. Um, occasionally we have one that's a little bit younger and they've been here through the summer or something and they're, you know, they, they're a little bit more mature and so we kind of play by ear and see how they do. Um, but it's three to five and then um, it's, it starts at 8.30, ends at one. And we ask that you not come any more than 15 minutes early and don't be more than 15 minutes late. And if you're going to be late, please call. And we do have kind of a policy so that people don't take advantage of that and end up I'm here, you know, for an hour waiting for a parent and I've made all the calls and nobody's around. So we do have a policy that if you're going to be late and you don't call, that we will call the police if we cannot get a hold of you or your emergency people um, to, you know, find you. Um, and then, yeah, and so kids kind of, when it's time to to leave that transition period can be difficult for them because they won't, don't want to quit playing, they're engaged in what they're doing and sometimes they have a difficult time, you know, parents have a difficult time getting them to go and so um, we kind of have a policy that I'm still in charge even though you're the parent because it's this facility and um, we want to maintain the kind of the calm demeanor and give the child a minute or two to decide to let go of the toy or to decide to quit and realize that he'll get to come back another day and play. And so sometimes it just takes um, them a little bit more time to give in to that idea 
and um, and go ahead and, and be ready to go. We don't want a power struggle between, you know, a parent and a child, and um, certainly we don't allow spanking. Um, it's not against the law in Montana to spank your children, but in our facility we don't allow um, spanking, and so um, that's just kind of, we have to kind of follow that policy. So I hope that is okay. Um, and if you have any questions about that, just ask. Um, there are some sometimes some little cues that you can use to help your child, you know, move out and to cooperate with when it's time to go. They're typically not ready to go when you're ready to go. They don't really understand, um, I have to go back to work. So, anyway, um, yeah, so I think that's about it. Um, I really look forward to getting to know you and your child better. And, um, yeah, we're going to have a great, fun year. Thank you. Bye.